All right, welcome Exonicom live attendees and thank you for joining me today for my breakout session. My name is Whitney Susanna and I'm a customer success director here at Exonify and um, today I'm going to be chatting with one of uh, the partners that I work really closely with who happens to be the largest retailer cooperative and we're going to be chatting about their journey to learning transformation. So before we get started, um, I just wanted to remind you that there is a live chat function. So you, you should see that in the right hand side of your screen. Um, so if there's any questions, comments, feedback as we go through, um, we will be responding to those uh, as we go. So feel free to enter them there. All right, so now for our special guest, I'd like to welcome Katie Shields, who is the Manager of Retail Training at Wakefern Food Corp. Welcome, Katie. Thank you so much, Whitney. Happy to be here. Great. We're happy to, we're happy to have you. So um, I'll just give a quick uh, background, I think, for everybody just on Wakefern. So um, Wakefern Food Corp uh, was founded in 1946, and they're based in New Jersey, U.S., um, and they're the 20th largest private company and the largest retailers cooperative group of supermarkets in the United States. Um, so we've started our partnership with Wakefern in about late 2018 um, through a pilot that we'll hear more about that Katie will share. And we've been working very closely with Wakefern um, since then to really help transform their organization and what learning like looks like um, within their business and their network of over 70,000 employees. So it's been quite the journey to date and Katie's here to share some of that with us. So uh, Katie, maybe if we can just start and kick things off, if you could share a bit about what did lear learning look like um, within Wakefern pre-Exonify and sort of pre the pilot pre-Exonify, what, what were some of the frontline challenges that you were having? Sure, yeah, um, we had a lot of frontline challenges when it came to um, learning most of our training took place for our new hires within the first few days and they received all of the information that we could possibly throw at them we we like to refer to it as fire hosing training to new hires um, and we we kept finding that although we were feeding them all of this content in their first few days very rarely did they actually remember what it was that we were trying to get across to them during that training. Um, and we also had a lot of struggles and challenges trying to get them back to our LMS system to deliver the train, any additional new training to them. It became a very uh, heavy administrative burden. So we found that the traditional LMS system was not a really good fit when we were trying to help our frontline associates get better at their job and feel comfortable and, and secure in what they know. Yeah, absolutely. And this is something that um, that we current that you you had shared with us just about sort of that traditional onboarding and the seat time that was required, and then what you were you know hoping for for the future onboarding experience and reducing that seat time. Um, yeah. This was definitely a, a huge um, push for us to be able to streamline that initial experience and then be able to um, touch the associates with additional information as they were growing in their role. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think there's a lot of organizations that you know we come across and um, that are out there that really are stuck in that more traditional um, learning approach and trying to fit that for the front line. So curious to know, like, what was your tipping point or was there a tipping point um, for making that change and, and, you know, having that need to make that change? Or absolutely, there was a tipping point. Um, we were really facing a lot of challenges in this, um, as I'm sure many other retailers and grocers are also facing, um, we were struggling to retain our top talent. Um, we were really faced with a lot of changes in the organization that we needed to be able to react to very quickly. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we were really focusing on the customer experience and we knew that the best way to do that and to retain and grow our business through that customer experience was to have 
um, better trained and um, skilled associates in our store. So that was really where we started and what we were trying to address when we started taking a look at um, other options to a traditional LMS system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And things that I think we, we often see. So, um, you know, solving for some of those key things. Um, that's, yeah, that's great. Thanks for sharing that. And so, what was your game plan? So how did you sort of start by approaching um, approaching how you were going to tackle that and get that buy-in um, from the business to do that? Sure. Um, so we do operate um, through a committee structure because we are a member-owned cooperative. Um, we have uh, many committees across the organization that are set up of um, member representatives as well as Wake Fern staff representatives. Um, so we first got together a group of um, Wayfern staff as well as um, our member staff and formed a task force that really took this and ran with it and um, did what we needed to do in order to address those challenges that we had on the last slide. Um, and at that point, we really didn't know what was out there available for us. Um, so we actually conducted a learning ecosystem assessment with a partner um, consultant and, and um, really identified some opportunity areas for us to modernize our approach to learning for our frontline associates. And from that point, we went through an RFP and we got started with a proof of concept. And, and the reason we went the route of proof of concept was um, that was really important to getting the buy-in that we knew we would need um, for something so vastly different from what we had done when it came to frontline learning in the past. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we really figured everything out before we went um, in front of our board of directors with a recommendation um, to move forward with enterprise rollout. Yeah. Okay. And the POC. So let's dig into the POC a bit. Who, how did you decide um, your audience of who would be sort of included within that POC? So walk us through a bit about how that was structured. Sure, so we were very purposeful and intentional about who um, we asked to participate in the proof of concept. Um, we, we approached um, members that are typically very supportive of their the training for their frontline associates so they were already bought into training as being um, extremely valuable and impactful to their business and their bottom line um, and we also made sure to include some that are a little bit more skeptical <laughs> and um, wanted to make sure that we had some that that maybe weren't as um, convinced of of the value of training so that we could really make sure we're um, hitting all of our audiences. And then the other important piece is that we wanted to include those stakeholders um, that are involved in the decision-making process once we took it to our board of directors. So we wanted to make sure we had some influential members that really could impact and, and address and influence the decision that was being made when we brought forward the recommendation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I know you had mentioned too, like, getting people to buy into the reinforcement was a big piece of it too, right? Yes, it was. Um, again, the, the reinforcement piece of the platform is a complete mindset shift yeah. from where we were before with a traditional LMS where most of the training, if not all of the training was happening in the first few days. We were now asking for our members to buy into the fact that the associates on the front line needed to engage with this platform for three to five minutes every single shift. And that was a huge part of what we wanted to prove. The proof of concept is that that actually worked and had a business impact. Um, and we were glad that we were able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So and did it. What were uh, some of the results that you that you found um, from the from the POC? 
Sure. Um, we, we definitely saw some really great participation in the platform. Um, the proof of concept was only a few months long and um, it, was, it was something that we were doing kind of small scale. So uh, we're also trying to address some other initiatives. So we felt really great that the participation we achieved um, in the short time was as high as it was. Um, the frequency was also um, really solid. Uh, and the, I think the most impactful metric that we got out of the POC was the knowledge lift that we saw on the topics that we delivered. That's where we really were able to show an ROI for the training and to be able to show them, show our stakeholders where the associates were scoring initially on content that was refresher content and the knowledge lift was after they were engaging with the reinforcement training, every shift was definitely a key metric for us. Yeah, I think we often see that, um, being able to show an actual knowledge lift. So tracking that baseline and then tracking that current, uh, current knowledge and kind of showing that lift is always, um, is always pretty impactful. There were a few other results too, because I know you had went out and did a, a survey through Exonify and sort of surveyed um, anecdotally, you know, how the POC um, participants liked that, uh, liked the, the training. Do you want to share anything around that? Yeah, we, we got a lot of really great feedback, very positive, um, the associates, loved how engaging it was they loved the games everyone had their favorite and and we heard a lot of that through the survey that we pushed um to the poc participants um and they also were um pretty pretty agreeable to the fact that their knowledge actually improved so it's one thing for us to see that in the metrics but it was also really great to see that they recognized that their knowledge had gotten better um helping them to feel more comfortable and successful in, in their roles yep absolutely some other things that we absolutely. were also really excited about um with the platform was the communication capabilities and you can see that we had um, a lot of use of our communication uh, through broadcast messaging, which is something we never had the ability to do with our frontline associates because they don't have email. So that was also another key metric for us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a big one for frontline for sure. So what were some of the key lessons learned um, from the POC? Yeah, so um, in addition to the metrics and the, um, the participant feedback, um, we were able to really confirm a couple of the things that were um, potential roadblocks for us, um, devices being one of them. Um, we were unsure POC if the stores were gonna have enough devices to actually have a have all of their associates participate. Um, and we did find that there were not any of our, our POC stores that needed to purchase any additional devices. We were able to achieve great participation without needing any additional um, devices. We did also leverage for some of the personal mobile devices, which made um, a difference, but definitely we didn't find that that was even necessary the store devices were sufficient. Um, we also got a lot of feedback regarding the content that was delivered during the proof of concept, which, which was, um, was a little bit limited because it was just the proof of concept, but um, we made note that it was really important for the associates engagement in the platform to make sure the content that they were seeing during the daily reinforcement was really closely aligned to the jobs that they do and helping them do those jobs better. And we also um, were really happy to find that the platform engagement didn't really impact the, the normal day-to-day -day operations of the store or the business. Um, we found that associates fit it in their day when it made the most sense, either when they were um, 
using a device regularly as a part of their job, they would just log into Exonify right after that engagement. And potentially, you know, before and after breaks was another opportunity. And we did find that the um, associates were just leveraging downtime, so of slower, you know, store sales or volume where they were logging in and using their time efficiently that way. Yeah, yeah, which is great, sort of naturally fitting into that flow of work. Um, very good, okay. And so that's the POC, so we talked about that. Thanks um, for sharing all of, all of that. Uh, what has been, so obviously there's an overall transformation of learning um, that's taking place. So what did the rest of the rollout look like and um, sort of what's happened to date and how did you approach um, the full rollout once you got that buy-in and the uh, sort of the thumbs up to move forward? Sure. So we started um, actually uh, almost a year ago building out content to prepare for rollout, which um, was scheduled to start in January. Um, so we spent a couple of months building up our content um, in addition to what we had through the proof of concept. Um, we started our rollout in January and had it um, set up into four phases. Unfortunately, uh, we had to pause for COVID, so we got through our first two phased rollouts. Um, Pre-COVID, we paused and actually spend some time focusing on additional content development while we were paused for rollout and have since been able to meet our full enterprise rollout for all our stores um, mm -hmm. post COVID. So just recently we were able to complete that. Awesome. So um, what we have up next is um, focusing on our um, decommissioning of our traditional LMS system so that mm -hmm. we can move our new hire training into Exonify's guided learning. And um, that's really our big push currently. Mm -hmm. And then as we are moving forward, um, once that has happened, we will be looking at rolling out to our Wake for Corporate Associates as well as our warehouse logistics teams um, to get them on the platform as well. So that's what's up next. That's what's up next. Never a dull moment. A bit, bit of a pause no. <laughs> with COVID, but uh, there's been a lot of great work um, done to date. And so lots has happened and, and more to come with um, just the de decommission of the LMS moving over um, all of the onboarding pieces and then the other user audiences. So um, yeah, still exciting. We'll maybe talk more about uh, the rest of your journey next year at, at Exonicon Live next year. So that's great. So curveball for you, Katie. What's your Wonderful. what's your favorite feature um, within within the platform? Do you have a favorite feature? I do. Um, I would say my favorite feature is Leader Zone, um, and the reason that I say that is that we have found um, when the leaders in the store are engaged in leader zone and actually going in regularly and and following up with associates that haven't been in the platform uh, for a little while and um, engaging with them about that encouraging them to go in and why it's important you know that's really where we see participation grow and um, you know, be sustainable. Um, so I think that's probably one of the most valuable um, tools in Exonify mm -hmm. is, is leaders. That's great. Yeah, I think moving away from that spoon feeding of, um, you know, we, we say that the spoon feeding of the report as opposed to letting them sort of self navigate and find that information and um, coach their teams accordingly with that data is, um, is powerful. So that's great. Um, very good. Okay. Well, I think that concludes our session today. So Katie, thank you so much to you. Thank you to Wakefern um, for being such a great partner of Exonify and sharing your story with us. Thank you. It's a great partnership. Sounds good. Okay. Well, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of Exonicom Live and we'll uh, hopefully see you soon. Take care. Thank you.
Thank you. Okay, stop sharing. <laughs> I think we're good. Are you still hey. Yeah, I think I'm done. Oh, I'm recording, but that's okay. They, they're going to pause it. 